Lair of the Mounties. We present episode 28 in the dramatic series Blair of the Mounties, being the further adventures of Inspector Blair as a private investigator in London. The tragic death of Virginia Stewart, well-known actress, brings Blair his first case. London, in spite of Blair's 24 years absence on service in Canada, the scene of his birth and early training is strangely familiar. For the first time in his professional experience, Blair is for the defence. Clement Wilson, fiancé of Miss Stewart, has been arrested and is awaiting trial on the charge of murder. In spite of the overwhelming evidence against Wilson, Blair finds a curious flaw in the Scotland Yard case. As our scene opens, we find Blair's wife, Marjorie, waiting expectantly for her husband's return from the day's work. Oh, hello, dear. I thought you were never coming. Aren't oh. you awfully tired? <laughs> oh, Marjorie, oh, I'm not especially tired. We're getting on, dear. Oh, you mean the case is all finished? Well, no, dear. Good gracious, I'd say not. It's only just beginning to soften, you might say. Oh, I'm so glad, darling, because I've got a tremendous secret to tell you. You're going to be awfully surprised. <laughs> yes, I know these secrets of yours. Oh, but you'd never guess. All right, keep it for a bit, Marjorie. My head's full of this case. I know it's very bad form to talk shop especially in England, but... Uh... Why, not a bit, dear. I'd love to talk about it. We'll just go right over this whole case from the very beginning. I know you don't think I have any brains, darling, oh, but you're Marjorie. going to be awfully surprised. I always said I'd make a good wife for a detective. Of course, I think you're the finest wife a detective could possibly have, myself. Oh, yes, but I don't mean that. I mean it in a very practical way. Well, all right. It's awfully good of you, anyway. Now, uh, let's see. I'll begin, dear. The first thing is that Jennings, Miss Stewart's butler, finds Virginia Stewart dead in the drawing room. No, that's not the first thing, my dear. That's personal evidence. We start with a fact that's official record. The first thing is that the police get a call from Miss Stewart's house reporting her death. Oh, yes, I know. Well, then, uh, uh, the police go to the house and they find the body of Virginia Stewart in the drawing room. She's been shot twice and she's dead. Oh, isn't it terrible, Jimmy? Just think of that poor... Oh, here, steady on. No sentiment. What do they find? Oh, of course, I forgot. Out in the garden, they find a revolver. It belongs to Mr. Clement Wilson, the big theater manager, Miss Stewart's fiancé. What else do they find? Well, nothing, unless you want to start on the butler's story. No, before we come to that, on evidence by the man Jennings, they arrest Clement Wilson at his club. Yes, and in the pocket of Wilson's overcoat, they find a letter. Good, that's the big thing. This letter is anonymous. It charges Virginia Stewart with unfaithfulness. Now, bear this in mind. It's the basis of motive in the police case. Oh, yes, of course. Now, do we have the butler's evidence? Yes, we can take that now. But he isn't a butler. Jennings is a sort of a handyman. Waits on table, does the garden, and runs errands, and so oh, on. But it's so much nicer to call him a butler. I've got a reason, dear. That's the secret I'm going to... Hold work. on. We're getting off the track. Let's have the butler's evidence and stick to the point. Oh, I always stick to the point. Uh, here we are. Jennings says he was in the servant's room. He heard the sound of quarreling. Mr. Wilson's voice raised in anger. Knowing Mr. Wilson had a very violent... Easy temper. on. Just facts. Anyway, he heard a shot from the drawing room. He ran into the hall, just in time to see Wilson run out the front door, throwing something into the shrubbery. That was the revolver. Yes, now I think we've got the police case. Wilson is a very jealous man. He gets this letter accusing his fiancée of unfaithfulness. He goes to her house, has a severe quarrel, flies into a mad rage and kills her. On being questioned by the police, Wilson's story is so ridiculous that it strengthens the case against him. What is his story? A purely negative defense says he didn't quarrel with Miss Stewart. And of course he says he didn't kill her. Says he never fired a revolver in his life. But the most astonishing thing of all is he says he never saw that letter. Oh, but that's stupid. It was found in his pocket with the envelope torn open. Oh, dear, that does give him away. Why, it's too ridiculous. Marjorie, it's so ridiculous that he must be telling the truth. What? That's the break in the case for us, dear. I've been working on it all day. How wonderful. Do tell me. Here's a photo of the envelope. It's addressed Mr. Clement Wilson, manager, Royalty Theatre, 719 Gresham Square, London West. See anything funny in that address? Why, no, it's just an old address. 719 Gresham Square is Wilson's private house. And as there's a postmark on the letter, that's where it went. No. Oh, but Jimmy, how... Just a minute. I... Leave that house address off. How does the address read without it? It reads... Clement Wilson, manager, Royalty Theatre, London West. Yes, that was the address on the letter when it was posted. Just Royalty Theatre. And that's where it went. 
Oh, dear, I'm getting so mixed up. Now hold tight, Marjorie. Somebody got that letter at the Royalty Theatre and took it away without the Gresham Gardens address on it. That was written in after. But perhaps it was Mr. Wilson. Then why would he forge the Gresham Gardens address on it? Oh, dear, I don't know. Why, it's as plain as can be. Somebody wanted to plant that letter on Wilson. They wanted it postmarked, so they sent it to the theatre. It goes into a pigeonhole in the office there. Somebody got it out, filled in the person address, and planted it in Wilson's pocket. How wonderful! So that upsets the Scotland Yard case. Oh, day. Lord, no. I wouldn't dream of springing that on them. There's not enough proof to stand in court, and I haven't got the man. But you forget, forgot a piece of serious evidence. What's that? Wilson and Miss Stewart must have had a quarrel. The people next door heard them. That's no good. Oh, but it disproves Wilson's statement that he didn't have a quarrel. And he's telling the truth. Don't forget, they were both in the theatrical business. Oh, but what difference does that make? Simply, they were going over a new play. Oh, dear, how disappointing. It's another point to Wilson. Two points in which he's telling the truth, even though it does look ridiculous. But the revolver was his. Sure, somebody gave it him as a present years ago. He gave it Miss Stewart. She was afraid of burglars. I believe he's telling the truth. But only he and Miss Stewart knew about it. Or, well, there was perhaps somebody else. I see. So that's as far as you've gone, dear? Yes, and a long way from success, Marjorie. The case will come before Lord Justice Harbury. Oh, he's such a nice old man. And mm. he looks beautiful in his robes. They say he's always making jokes. Jokes, yes, he's full of them. Jokes for the counsel, even jokes for the prisoner. But when it comes to a verdict, he hangs them, oh. Marjorie. Oh, what a horrible old man. Yes, the prosecution will be led by Sir James Douglas, Crown Prosecutor. He's a dour, implacable Scotsman. Yes, unless I get a lot more than I have now, there's mighty little chance for poor Wilson. Not in England, at any rate. And now, Jimmy, darling, for my secret. All right, I suppose that's only fair. Now we're through with the case. Oh, but it's about the case, too. What? Certainly. You see, dear, I've been reading those wonderful books by Jeremy Stout. Oh, yes, I know. Detective stories. Oh, but he's awfully clever. He solves the most baffling crimes. Yes, in a book. Now, darling, don't be sarcastic. Jeremy Stout really is clever. He makes you think everybody is a guilty party, and then right on the very last page... Who do you think turns out to be the murderer? Don't know. Give it up. Why, you'd never guess. It's the butler. Oh, for heaven's sake, Marjorie. Now, dear, I don't want to make you angry, but you must let me tell you my secret. Yes, yes, all right. I feel sure that butler at Miss Stewart is hiding something. Now, Marjorie, I've been all over that. He's a queer old fellow, but he's quite honest. He's a little fanatical about religion, perhaps, but that's nothing. I tried him with that letter. He even wrote a line or two for me. The experts say it's not the same hand at all. But yes, dear. But you said he wrote with his left hand. I know we've been over that, too. Plenty of people do that. He always uses his left hand. Can't write with the other. What would you say if I told you he has written with his right hand? What? Oh, good Lord, Marjorie, isn't it enough to have one member of the family in this case? But I only wanted to help you. All right, go on. You see, this afternoon I went out collecting for the Girls' Friendly Society, mm. and I called on Miss Parrot. She lives next door to that poor Stuart girl's house. Yes? Oh, she's such a dear old thing, with lovely silver ringlets and the most adorable cameo brooch you ever saw. Oh, I say, really, Marjorie, oh, look I here. I know, dear, but I'm coming straight to the point. Oh, let's see, where was I? You got to the cameo brooch. Oh, yes, it really was lovely, darling. Oh, but of course, it hasn't anything to do with the murder. Well, that's something to know, anyhow. Yes. Now, you'd better listen very carefully, because very soon, as I said before, I'm coming to the point. Yes, dear, I feel sure you will, sooner or later. Yes, uh, Miss Parrott was a friend of Virginia Stewart, and one day they were talking about cleaning gloves. You know, Virginia Stewart wore the most beautiful gloves. I suppose we're coming to the butler sometime or other, oh, too. Oh, yes, we're coming to the butler. Jennings had a good recipe for cleaning gloves, and he wrote it out for Miss Parrott. Well, what then? Darling, now I'm coming to the point. Good, I thought you'd forgotten it. Oh, now don't be nasty, dear. Jennings was in an awful hurry when she called for the recipe, but she made him stop and write it out. Yes, and what then? My dear, he wrote that recipe with his right hand. Marjorie, are you sure? Oh, not only that, but I've got that recipe. What? Where is it, Marjorie? Quick! Oh, I've got it in my hand back. You see, I'm very methodical since I started working for the Girls' Friendly hmm. Society. Oh, dear, where did I put that hand back? Marjorie, for heaven's oh, sake. Oh, now, now, patience. I know it's in the house somewhere. Oh, hmm. here it is, under the flower pot. Let's see it. By... By Jove, Marjorie. It's all right. I showed it to Professor Blake. He says it's the same hand as the letter in the Stewart case. Good Lord, Marjorie, do you know what this means? Oh, of course I do. I told you it was the butler. By Jove, if we could break that case before it goes to trial. Tomorrow will be too late. I might persuade Mac to pull Jennings in for questioning. Let's see. The lawyer's people have been working on the past life of this man Jennings. If we could establish a motive, I'd... Yes, I'd have a perfect case. 
I wonder if they got anything. Can't you uh, get Mr. Wellborn at his house? Yes, I'll try. Give me that phone. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Hello? Give me Kensington 817. Thanks. Hello? Uh, can I speak to Mr. Welbin? Thanks. Hello? Hello? Oh, uh, Mr. Welbin, Blair speaking. That uh, Wilson case. Did you get anything on Jennings? What? A daughter. Uh, can that be proved? Well, that's all I want. Yes, I've got the rest. If you can get Jennings pulled in for questioning, you, you think you can? Right. I believe you've got it. Is there something against Jennings? I should say there was. A first-class motive. Welbin's going to use his influence to get Jennings questioned. I've got to go. Oh, but what is it, dear? Uh, we'll see you later, Marjorie. So long. Have you, you got Jennings here, Mac? Yes, he's here. All right, try him with those questions, just as I wrote them. All right. Bring him in, Slade. Sit down, Jennings. I don't know what this is all about. Oh, just a question or two. No, uh, this letter found in Mr. Wilson's pocket. You ever see it before? No, never. All right. Now, you've worked for Miss Stewart for two years. Y yes, sir. Ever go to the Royalty Theatre to get her mail? Why, 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 yes, sir. Now and again. You were there the day of Miss Stewart's death. Why, yes, I, I did happen to be there that day. All right. Three years ago, Jennings... You were living in Chester under the name of Richard Marsden, is that right? I, I ain't, ain't prepared to answer that question. Why not? It's true, isn't it? Well, yes, it's true. And you had a daughter named Alice Marsden. And what if I have? What's he got to do with you? Come on, Jennings. There's a girl named Alice Marsden in an asylum for the insane at Surbiton. And she's your daughter. Yes, she is. I know what you're after, and I'll tell you. I'm not afraid. My daughter Alice was a good girl. It was that Stuart woman as coaxed her to go on the stage. It ruined her body and soul. It was this here man, Wilson, that discharged her from the theatre when she was no more used to him. Turned her out on the streets, they did. William Jennings, I charge you with the murder of Virginia Stuart. Anything you say, yes, maybe... Yes, I've done it. I killed her, and I'd have got him too about it. Take him out, Slade. I'd have got him too, I tell you. Not had the chance. Hmm. We'll... Blair, my boy, congratulations. You made a mighty fine start. Thanks, Mac. You have heard episode 28 in the dramatic series Blair of the Mounties. Our next episode is entitled Lord Waverton's Dilemma. <laughs> <laughs>